Hello everyone and welcome to my Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. When Shaylet is, however briefly, the voice of reason, you know you've got trouble. But that was the case on this week's episodes of Bold and Beautiful. Meanwhile, Taylor vanished as quickly as she'd appeared, and Luna's secret was revealed. Oh, and it looks as if Thomas may have some unexpected competition. Our Finn and watching Hope and Finn bond this week reminded me that not all that long ago, we were speculating that this pair might find themselves drawn together. Now, as word begins to spread that her dad and his mom are involved, that seems more likely than ever. Think about it. Obviously, Hope isn't going to be thrilled with the notion of her dad dating Shayla, but given that Hope tends to see the best in people, it's not hard to imagine her eventually coming around. Once Deacon gives a few of his patented hey, if I can change, anyone can speeches, Hope will no doubt start thinking her pop is right. To be clear, he's not. Shayla is a whole different beast, but that's another story. And if Hope decides to throw her support behind the idea of Deacon and Shayla, forming some sort of warped relationship based entirely on the idea of them making one another better, it's not hard to imagine Finn jumping on board. After all, we've been told repeatedly that he has some weird, inexplicable connection to his birth, mother seeing in Hope a much-needed cheerleader, Shayla will clearly do everything in her power to make sure Steffi never reunites with Finn all of which means Steffi might want to get her tush back to Los Angeles as soon as possible, because she's in the fight of her life. Some fans were bent out of shape when Finn told Hope she was better than Thomas, especially given that her current beau is the doctor's brother-in-law. Shouldn't he, they thought, be siding with his wife, who says that Thomas is a changed man. They pointed out that not all that long ago, Finn seemed to believe that as well, but people on this show are as likely to remember their own history as the writers are to let them discuss it. In any case, while I personally see zero chemistry between Hope and Finn, the idea of them becoming involved during Steffi's absence is somewhat intriguing. And unlikely as it seems, wouldn't we have said the same thing about her hooking up with Thomas a few months ago? Perhaps a Finn-slash-Hope flirtation could be the next step in the ongoing story I like to call the sexual awakening of Miss Hope Logan. It would also be a cool reversal, given that Hope has spent the past year or so wanting someone who loves her and only her. What has she got that in Thomas? Only to find herself drawn to Finn. In any case, look for Hope to keep flashing back to Finn, saying that Thomas isn't the man for her about a billion more times in the weeks ahead as the show oh so subtly pushes in that direction. Shayla Carter, voice of reason. While I don't buy for a minute Deacon sacrificing everything to be with his favorite nine-toed psycho, it's undeniable that the two of them have chemistry. I'm glad the show seems determined to plow forward with this story, if only because the last thing I want is weeks and weeks of Sheila and Deacon keeping their engagement secret while canoodling in his closet. At least taking them public, starting with Finn, will provide a whole lot of drama. While Shayla eventually came around to the idea of marrying Finn, she at least had the foresight to think this wouldn't be an easy road. She even tried rejecting the guy, listing all the reasons they wouldn't work, before pushing those doubts aside and accepting his proposal. Moving forward, I'd like very much love it if they stopped having Deacon say the word crazy and then catch himself. I mean, if you are aware that your lady is so insane that the word crazy could push her over the edge, maybe rethink the whole engagement thing. That and the daddy thing can both go into a box smart, do not open, ever, under any circumstances. This week, poor Eric went from his hands trembling whenever he even thinks about picking up a pencil to him, coughing up blood like Nicole Kidman in the final act of Moulin Rouge. I don't really think the show would kill Eric, unless there's more going on behind the scenes than we know. Remember when Susan Flannery decided she was hanging up her acting hat, the writers crafted a lovely final storyline for Stephanie. I never saw the end of that movie, Honey Bear. I assume everything works out for Nicole Kidman, and it ends with a big production number. 
so it's not entirely inconceivable that a similar situation could be unfolding. But having spoken on several occasions to John McCook, who never imagined he'd be playing Eric all these years later, I just don't believe he's ready to follow in Flannery's footsteps. Somebody needs to get Bridget on the phone pronto and let her pull a miracle cure out from beneath her Madame X veil. Thrilled, as I was to see Krista Allen return to the canvas, what was up with Taylor suddenly whipping up conspiracy theories about how Hope might be using Thomas? To what end? Long before Hope got re-involved with Thomas romantically, she'd already made it clear that he was the only person in the entire known universe who could design for her line. Taylor told Hope it wouldn't be fair for Thomas to want a life with her if that wasn't what she too wanted. How hard would it have been for the guy's mom to explain she knows exactly what that's like thanks to the years she spent chasing after Ridge? Instead, it was left for Hope to spell things out to both Taylor and the audience. Do I take issue with the fact that Liam has feelings for two different women? That he's in love with two different women? She asked Taylor. Yes, I do take issue with that, and I would hope that you could relate to that, given your history with Ridge. Instead of processing the truth bomb that had been dropped on her, Taylor basically rolled her eyes at the younger woman. Asterisk, if Shayla and Deacon really do get married, I'm about as sure as I can be about one thing, it won't take place in the Forrester living room. I assume they'll do it at his restaurant, maybe roll out the uneaten cake from Carter and Zoe's ill-fated ceremony. If there's one thing that drives me crazy about this show, and truthfully there are many, it's that when the writers latch onto a phrase, they beat it to death. But usually the phrase stays within one storyline, being uttered repeatedly by the characters within it. So I didn't know whether to laugh or cry when Donna suddenly started pointing out that Eric was a world-renowned designer in much the same way that Taylor is a renowned psychiatrist.